Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and a short review number six. So this is the next in the reviews for my friend Keith Short. Um, this is the latest one he handed off to me to do a review on and as you can see it is the Academy 172nd scale B17F Memphis Bell. Kit number 12495 which is really weird because it's almost the same as this. One, two, four, four, eight, five. Mmm, that's weird. But anyway, this kid here I have actually read some reviews on and they have been pretty favorable because at some point I would like to build a B-17 myself, but uh, the 148 just seems a little large. And I'm thinking 172 second scale would be a better, better one for me, but because of that, I've done some research, and this one and one other kit seems to have really nice reviews. So let's go ahead and open this up, and we'll take a look at the contents. All right, first, the paper goods. <clears throat> so we've got the little handout here, guide line for, be guide line for beginners, um, showing what kind of tools would be handy. And uh, that is in English and an Asian language. Korean maybe? I don't know. But there's that. Then there's a warning and assembly of model kits. So it has it in uh, this language here and English <clears throat> and French and German and two more Asian languages. So yeah, I'm thinking that first one is Korean. And then I'm going to say this is Japanese, and this is Chinese, maybe? Anyway, there's that. And then here's the decals. <clears throat> I usually save these for last, but since they're here, let's take a look at them. These say Memphis Bell <clears throat> up here. And uh, it looks like maybe you can do, I don't know, maybe it's only that, but... Um, they look to be really nice decals are in register yeah you can do different versions apparently i think because we have yeah memphis bell there miss wachita there there's these so you must be able to do different versions <clears throat> but they look to be in register and they seem very thin and not very much as far as um film around the outside edges so those look pretty nice all of the um, the stencil stuff here looks very clear I'm sure through a magnifying glass it'd look pretty nice but uh, the actual instructions are copyrighted to, or the uh, decals are copyright 2000. <clears throat> so that is that stuff. Then we have the instructions themselves. Um, just regular paper. What, what's that? Didn't see that. That's stuck, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> the instructions, just uh, plain paper, black and white. Gives the usual uh, legend here of the different symbols and what they mean throughout the instructions. And this is a fold out kind of deal. Oh, there we go. Check with part list before unsealing. That way, if you're missing anything, you can contact whoever and get some stuff. <clears throat> Not a whole lot as far as instructions. There are only eight steps. That's interesting. So you have cockpit, um, bomb bay, In the uh, interior, you know, the turrets, other guns and stuff like that. Uh, the wing halves with landing gear. Wing halves with the wheels, the uh, superchargers. Exhaust stacks. Um, engine cowling and prop. <coughs> 
tail section, the nose, Bombay doors, um, radome, I think, antenna type situation. And then painting and decaling. So we have Memphis Bell B17F-10-BO, serial number 4124485324th Bomb Squadron, uh, or 91st Bomb Squadron, 8th Bomb Group, June 43, Bassingbourne, England. So that is showing, now this is interesting. It's showing like, uh, I don't know what those splotches are on the on the it's showing olive drab which is the main color medium green are these dark splotches and then neutral gray underneath now I'm not exactly sure about what that is all about because I didn't know maybe it's supposed to simulate this coloration or something but I didn't know it had any kind of splotches on it. Oh, that's something I would look into. Then we have Miss Wachita B17F 20 DL. Um, same stuff, you know, same bomb group and all that kind of stuff. February 44, Bassingbourne, England. Now, this doesn't show those splotches, so that's interesting. But uh, so there you go. There are two. Um, versions that a person can build and then here is a layout of all of the sprues parts trees runners whatever you want to call them parts locating diagram so that is the instructions so it looks here like the um, sprues come in these plastic bags some of them two sprues to a bag so let me cut this open first we'll look at sprue a so this is the size of it here i'll zoom in and i'm going to do this on each sprue so you can see the size of the sprue and then we'll look at the actual components thusly okay so we have bombay doors some bulkheads, bulkhead with detail here. Uh, that might be the navigator's position or something. Now this is a good example of um, molded on detail. So for example, you have this fire extinguisher here. Some manufacturers might um, include that as a separate part, which that's fine. However, in a case like this where it's inside a aircraft where you can't even see inside when you're done to begin with because windows are so tiny well that's adequate that works you've got the pilot and co-pilot seat here i'm thinking um <clears throat> wheel hubs that looks like the tail wheel there the uh steering wheels no, i'm kidding those are the uh flight controls uh, more seats here oh you know what I'm not thinking that those are the pilot seats those are kind of small these I'm thinking would be the pilot seats because they're so tall I don't know uh, Bombay parts landing gear now here's something this landing gear the main struts and the supports here are all molded together which is kind of nice so that makes it less fiddly to glue together and uh, they look pretty good the molding is pretty nice on this like on these edges here you can't really see much in the as far as uh, mold seam lines uh, the Bombay doors they have uh, interior detail like some ribbing and there are some ejector pin marks here 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 and here but they're on this flat edge so if they're visible which i'm thinking they would be they would be a lot easier to deal with than ejector pin marks in the middle of this uh this detail now we got a bit of a mold seam line on this on this football right here so that would have to be dealt with but not too bad <coughs> Um, I think these are the bomb racks that go on the inside of the bomb bay, and those look pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, all looks pretty good. That is sprue A. And here is sprue B, which is a double whammy affair. You can see it's pretty good size. 
So looking at the details, we got the bombs here. The fins are molded on. Um, you can see most of it's on this one side and this extra piece on this side. And being just two pieces like that, um, should be fairly easy to clean the, uh, the seam lines once they're glued together. Um, some antennas here, torpedo tubes, more bombs, props. Props are nice. Um, sometimes with uh, props you can get a, a lot of flash around the blades and it can be a pain to clean up. This isn't too bad. A little bit on the tips there, but overall not bad. Uh, the radial engines. Um, simple. Just looks like one piece units here. But in this size and with cowling over it, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. Now we have four different cowls going on here. Four different, two different cowls, cowls. Uh, there's this one here, and then there's this one here with the uh, cow flaps. So I'm not sure what that's all about. That's kind of interesting. Without studying the... Um, the... Uh, instructions further I, I don't know so then you got the wheels here two-piece wheels not bad um, this is something that if I were building this I might uh, get I know that's not wheels hmm that's interesting I'm not sure what yeah that is the wheels huh okay yeah those are the wheels it's really plain looking hub on them maybe there's other detail I don't know but these are the wheels and if I were building this kit I would possibly um, invest in some aftermarket resin just to have a little bit of uh, wheel sag because these are perfectly round there's no flat spot from weighted tires now here's the interesting thing and this is the thing that I've heard is a difference between this one and say the newer airfix kit which is also speed is supposed to be really good is the panel lines these panel lines, at first when I was looking at them, I thought they were raised, but they're recessed and they're ultra fine, very, very fine. All along these edges, these here, um, the uh, I'm assuming these are trim tabs here. Very finely molded, so they're a little more in scale than, say, the Airfix. I've heard the Airfix uh, panel lines are kind of deep. Which, you know, it's not a deal breaker entirely, but, you know, if somebody's going for something a little more in scale, this would be the way to go. Those are really fine. So those will be, those will take a, um, a wash really well and will look really good once painted and, and uh, weathered up a little bit. So anyway, that is sprue A. Sorry, I meant sprue B. All right, here is the next sprue, sprue C, which are the wing parts. And as you can see, it is quite large. Now, measuring this without taking into consideration the actual fuselage itself, this is uh, 17 inches, just as it sits. So that's pretty wild. So anyway, um, not much to talk about here. Again, the detail, the... the um, Panel lines are super fine, really nice, really nice detail. And here's something that I really like about an aircraft kit like this, is you don't have to glue the nacelles onto the wings, because boy, that can be a problem sometimes. All you have to worry about is cleaning up the sides when you glue it together. So that's pretty cool. So let me zoom in so we can look at the detail. So, yeah, well, not much to talk about. It just looks really good. Flaps look nice. A little uh, rivet detail going on there. There's some, uh, looks like, no, I think that's, uh, I think that might be uh, mold artifacts. Little dots, and they kind of curve over that way. So I'm not thinking that's, uh, that's detail. Then we have all the, so I call the fuel filler locations. So yeah, looks really good. Not much to say there, just uh, some good detail. 
So once the wings are put together and sanded and everything, the only place you'd have to worry about maybe re-scribing panel lines is right along the front edge. And those look pretty good. All right, so that's Sprue C. All right, here is Sprue J. Now here with Sprue J, um, you get the fuselage halves. Again, the same ultra fine detail going on. So it looks really good. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, pilot and co-pilot's uh, deck. More bulkheads. Um, Bombay doors again. So I think there's another, you can't remember offhand, there's another Uh, B-17 available from Academy. So that's why I think there's some crossover parts here like the Bombay doors and some other stuff we'll come up with here in a minute. Now, here are the uh, ball turret parts. Those look pretty good. The barrels for it. And they're, they're pretty plain. Um, it's just a, basically a tube with a little... Uh, bit of the barrel sticking out the actual receivers are just a rectangular block of plastic again being inside of the bubble and this small you really won't see them um, another thing i would possibly consider upgrading would be the machine gun barrels get some brass ones with cooling jackets um, <clears throat> but i'd really have to i'd really have to look to see if i would do that but otherwise looks really good all the details really nice this one has the same ejector pin marks here on the outside edges which would be easy to clean up so yeah that is sprue j all right in the same bag as sprue j is sprue k and that would be the uh we got more props here i don't know if those are different props or just they do look a little bit different. These have a rounder tip on them. So I'm sure it is specific to whichever version you are building of the two kits. So more uh, ultra fine detail on these tail planes. And here's the deal. Uh, I'm thinking these tailplanes are for the earlier B-17, the one without the dorsal part on the rudder. I'm just, I'm just guessing because those look a lot uh, more primitive. These are the ones that would actually be on this kit. And again, the detail is really nice and quite adequate for this scale. Right here we have the, oh yeah, see that's what this is. So <clears throat> this is the chin turret for the later versions, which would be a G or after, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the tail gun, the tail uh, gunner station where the uh, machine guns go for those. This is the platform for the chin turret more pitot tubes and machine gun barrels for this chin turret also has this different football thing going on here so yeah there's a few there's some crossover parts here for other versions but uh, again they look really good now these right here these have some pretty gnarly um mold seam lines like the part is shifted a little bit it's not entirely lined up to be you know round it's more like that but those are really tiny and that's something that could actually mm, depending on what it is could be simulated either with some photo etch fret material or um, some wire small wire here's a control control stick the joystick whatever you want to call it for the chin turret so that looks pretty good
That is sprue K. All right, next up, let's take a look at the clear parts. <clears throat> so first thing we have is the tail section and the side windows. Now, the nice thing about the tail section is that this is a separate part from the fuselage. So glue this together, get it masked off or masked off later, and then glue it on and paint it all as one piece. That way the windows don't look like they've just something that's been stuck in there because normally they insert from the inside of the fuselage and they just don't ever really seem to fit that great. So that's nice. This is the dorsal turret here. Looks really good and boy that one would be a that one's gonna be a bugger to mask. Little teeny tiny spots right there. But it's nice that it's one piece. Pretty clear. And uh looks like it just sets down on top so there's no distortions from places for pins and and uh corresponding holes. So that is that one. And just for the record, it is labeled B17 E and F. All right, then we have this one, which is B17 F and G. So we have two noses, and I'm not sure which one this kit would have. Um, looks like this kit would have this one. And the difference between the two is this one here has detail for a framework around the edge right there whereas this one just has a framework for this flat spot where the um, bombers bomb site looks through the knees here i am not sure what those are but they look like those don't actually go on this kit so i'm thinking i can't remember if a g had those but that looks like something more like uh the early b-17s without the dorsal um fillet on the fuselage in front of the uh the rudder the tail the vertical stabilizer they have like these bubble things so i'm thinking that's what those are which is weird though that it's labeled f and g so weird and then we have this part here which i think it's like an astro dome kind of thing i can't remember exactly what it is or what it's for but it goes right in front of the cockpit on the outside of the aircraft but all these parts look really good um this has like a rim around the inside here to fit onto the fuselage so there's no like locating pins or anything to distort the plastic and there is some distortion but it's not too bad but yeah so that's that one then we have this little tiny one here this is the um, glass that goes on either side of the nose one of them has a hole for a machine gun and uh, that one's labeled B-17F. But they're pretty clear. Frames are nice and um, visible. So it's easy to, uh, it'd be easy to mask it off. And then last, we have B-17E, F, and G, <clears throat> which are the side windows. Another one of those domes for in front of the cockpit. Uh, this part goes on the uh, would be right behind the ball or not the ball but the uh, dorsal turret and then the cockpit is all one piece and it glues on from the outside so it's just a matter of blending in the edges with the uh, fuselage so the windows are nice and flush with the frameworks um, leading wing leading edge light covers and then the ball turret and the ball turret i can't tell if the seam is a natural seam line on the ball turret itself but you can see through the glass some distortion from the locating points to put the two halves together so a pin on this side and a corresponding hole on that side but really, I can't think of any other way you'd get around that on a kit this small. 
So yeah, that's all that glass, all looks good. So that concludes all of the clear styrene. So there you have it, a short in-box review of the Academy 172nd scale B17F Memphis Bell. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you ever had any questions about this kit, hopefully those answered them. And now that I've seen it myself, um, I'm thinking there may be one of these in my future because, uh, yeah, looks to be a really nice kit. The surface detail on it is really nice. Um, panel lines, nice and subdued. The molding looks good. So overall, I think it would be a really fun kit to build. Make a nice B17 without being overly super huge. So that's it. As always, I thank you for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. If you have any hints, tips, questions, or any experience with this kit especially, please put them in the comments section down below, and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. I don't care. I'm good either way. And uh, if you're not subscribed already, maybe subscribe and, uh, you know, watch some of my older videos and watch for more videos to come. So that's it. Thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.